Hello viewers, it's K Felix here and I welcome you to my YouTube channel K Felix Inspire. I would like to say a very big thank you to all of you for the support and the contribution you are giving to this channel. If you are new to this channel, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post new videos. Stay tuned for more details in this report. Uh, as they say, you win some, you lose some, and uh, you live to fight another day. Uh, today the majority judgment obviously was not in our favor, but uh, before I proceed I want to say well done to the two petitioners. They put in a very spirited argument. There is no question about that and that is the reason why they managed to convince one of the three judges and this is the reason why we have uh, a, a dissenting judgment the majority judgment obviously was being read in a manner that uh, not everybody could hear and there must be reasons why the judge was so silent and yet the one who read the minority judgment was very clear you could hear every word that she mentioned. Now, we are fortified by the fact that uh, the court itself, in both judgments, has not said that the election can proceed. Both the majority and minority judgments have taken cognizance of the fact that there are stays on this matter. And this is the reason why we say that we shall leave to fight another day. On the 20th of this month, the Court of Appeal will also be pronouncing itself on a matter of similar nature that was presented to them by the Attorney General. We just want to ask a question to all those people who read the two judgments as to the kind of absurdity the majority judgment would create in the handling of elections in Zambia, where, as they said, that because there was a stay and uh, because of Article 57 read together with Article 52 that uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia was not obliged to cancel elections. What would have happened had there been a stay? Are the two judges suggesting to us that the elections would have proceeded with the names of two people who had resigned who had withdrawn their candidature? Would they have gone ahead with ballot papers carrying names of people who already indicated that they were withdrawing from participating in the elections? Obviously that would create a strange arrangement, it would create an absurdity. We are fortified by the holding of the minority judgment. It is clear that uh, the matter that was presented to the court was meritorious. It was based on fact and based on law. So we are not uh, uh, as happy as we should have been had the majority ruled in the manner that the minority ruled. However, this has been uh, an exercise which has been very important for the development of jurisprudence. I'm sure that members of parliament will reflect upon the provisions of those uh, articles in the constitution so that there is no similar absurdity in the future. And I'm hoping that soon this decision will be revisited because if it's not, it's going to create a very bad precedent that the ECZ can decide at will to ignore the fact that people are withdrawn from participating in an election. Article 52.6 is very clear that when a person resigns, the ECZ has no choice. As the minority judgment said, they are mandated by law, they are compelled by law to cancel elections and call for fresh nominations. That is the position that we stand, but of course the, the majority judgment is what shall, shall oblige all of us, but we still believe that the minority judgment was the correct judgment. Thank you. We we'll invite the petitioners Isaac and President Sinkama to speak as well. Well, we see um, the people of Zambia have issues with the, the Congo. Not because it's uh, a court which uh, 
is not very very important in this country it's, in fact it's one of the most important courts because it's handling the supreme law of the land but you see why there is uh, discontent is because uh, the court is failing to deal with matters in a more authoritative manner you know if you look at this matter it was coming up on monday for the judgment last week on monday and uh, the issue of uh, resignation and the uh, rescission, in fact, the rescission came after, afterwards. They were supposed to have delivered the judgment. But because there were some underhand methods which were used to try and coerce the, the outcome, we have this decision which is not even very clear from the majority. They have not indicated whether the um, uh, the, 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 those candidates who had resigned would be eligible to contest in the election if it was to run again. They have indicated that. Secondly, they have uh, made another serious omission in our view on the interpretation of Article 57 and Article 56 on the 30 days. When does the 30 days start running? The 30 days which they are talking about started running on the 12th of September and 13th of September. Okay, so if there was supposed to have been an election as a result of the 30 days which they are talking about, that election would have been held on the 12th and 13th of October this, 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 um, this month. You understand? So to tell us that the vacancy is going to be created because of the resignation, the question is when is that vacancy going to be created if it's not created upon submission of the resignation letters. So already now we are in suspense. We don't know uh, at what point a resignation letter is valid. Uh, and when, when is this uh, resignation letter taking effect? So we are, we are, we are, we are, what has happened now? is to create more more confusion more confusion on the on the letters of resignation because for us we were we were very much fortified that it is upon receipt of that letter that's when it takes effect but what they're telling us now is that uh, uh, it's not known when the resignation takes effect and, and it becomes very very unfortunate if we, we are going to proceed in this manner uh, because resignations will be always there in future and we may have problems. Secondly, we have a situation where a time frame for election is stipulated in the constitution. Uh, for example, the general election is, the, is going to, for the next one, it will be on the 13th of uh, uh, August 2026. So suppose there is a stay from a high court on a particular manner, or there's a stay in the constitutional court, because some candidate has issues, will that date be moved? What this court is telling us now is that that date cannot, can be can moved, depending on the stay. That someone can stay an election, a general election, which is supposed to be held, uh, uh, because someone has, a, has an issue, therefore the election cannot take, take place. And this is where we have a problem ourselves uh, where we start now giving excuses on the time frames that are in this constitution those should never be moved we, we, have, a, we have an issue in south africa for example where um, because of covid uh, the, the 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 various parties there wanted the election to be shifted uh, by six months or so the constitutional court refused they rejected, they said uh, the time frame which is in this constitution can never be can never be changed so whether there is uh, COVID, there is what you have to proceed with the election and indeed they, 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 they went ahead with the election and that's how we need to handle these matters because the moment we are going to start skating around and we, with, the, with no proper reasons we shall just create chaos in the electoral system and we don't need that and we agree with the, the, the dissenting judgment well she's talking about 
creating chaos if we are not very careful how we manage the electoral process and through judgment. And that definitely will create problems. Because we, we, are, we are going now, we are going into Kabusha, um, Kabusha and Kwacha, let's see what happens. What happens.